is good to see you again. I'm glad that you're here on a Sunday morning. I'm at church and I get to see a few of you guys each week at um, our outdoor service and you've been coming and um, sitting at the tables and so it's fun to see your faces. But for those of you that I haven't seen in a while, I just want to tell you that I'm proud of you for watching these on Sunday and getting a little bit of Jesus in your life before you start your school week. That um, we think about you all the time and we pray for you lots and we want you to know that Jesus loves you. And um, so that's what we're going to talk about today. We're just going to keep talking about how great this Jesus is and why I talk about him every single Sunday morning. You talk about what you love, right? Okay, so I want you guys to go get your Bibles. Go get them. Pause it if you have to. Go get your Bible. I want you to turn to the New Testament. Remember our song, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John. The first book of the Bible of the Old Testament is Matthew. So go to Matthew, go all the way through to the last chapter, which is 28. Put your finger down to verse 16. Then, if you're over 40, put your glasses on and get ready to read. Okay, so it says, Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Let me read that first part again. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Let's stop for a minute on that word doubt before we get to that last verse. All right, so the definition of doubt, some of you might already know this. You can guess it before I say it. It means feeling of uncertainty. You're just not sure. You're kind of doubting. You're walking out onto an icy lake. You're doubting if it can hold you. It feels uncertain. So these disciples were doubting. Okay, so a disciple, if you remember, is someone that learns from someone. So they were disciples of Jesus. They had been spending time with him. They had been learning from him. So I'm guessing they were good friends with him. They actually got to learn from his mouth. And even they doubted. So if you feel any kind of doubt, you are normal. Super, super normal. Sometimes I think people won't give kids quite enough, um, I don't know what's the word, credence. That's a big fancy word. Um, and they won't believe that um, kids can have doubts. We tell you something, you believe it because we're the adult. But I know that God loves, loves, loves little kids. And I remember as a little kid, I knew he was when he was talking to me. I bet you know when God's talking to you. So sometimes when you have doubts, uh, it's okay. And you can work those things out with God on your own. All right, so um, when we happen to have questions of who's this God or doubt his power, or question what's happening with our schools or with COVID. And so we're questioning Jesus. What do we do about that? If you remember in Kidwell, we talked about a man named Abraham in the Old Testament. And if you remember, he's kind of thought of as a superstar in the Old Testament. He's the father of the Israelites. So he has a relationship with God. God tells him, look, I'm going to give you a son in your old age. And guess what this man of God does? He laughs at God. He laughs at him. And you know what? Abraham struggled to obey God sometimes through his doubt. But the one thing that Abraham did really well is that he never lost contact with God. So even when he was doubting him or when he was struggling to obey, he still had contact with him. And then God came through on his promise and he gave him a son. And so he proved himself to Abraham. Another example is David. Okay, we talked about him and Kidwell too. Remember David and Goliath, he's little, Goliath's big. God comes through big for David. So he's proved himself. David knows that God's real. David becomes king of Israel. That's a really hard job. And all of a sudden in the Psalms, which he wrote a lot of them, you see doubt, 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 doubt. He's struggling with things to understand things. But guess who he brings those doubts to? God. And you watch him work it out with God. He didn't ever quit talking to him. It's important that if you are doubting if there is a God or if there's some things that God's allowed in your life, that you tell him about that. Okay, so get your Bible out again. In the Old Testament, in Jeremiah 29, so 
Jeremiah is about, you'll see, it's about halfway through, a little more than halfway through the Old Testament. Go to chapter 29. I'm going to read verses 11 through 13. You might even recognize them. And God was talking to the Israelites because they were having a hard time with their doubts and they were listening to deceptive people. And so this is what God says to them. Don't forget to put on your glasses. Okay, he says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. Listen to this. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord. Let me say that again. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord. That he honors us when we work to know him. When we are frustrated or confused about something or even finding him and we work to find him, he will be found. How? Okay, here's some of the tools he left for us. The Bible. This is God's word. He left it for us. It tells us about him. It tells us things that he said about himself, that he'll be found. So the Bible, so reading the Bible, not um, guessing what's in the Bible. You're actually reading the Bible so you know what God said. You know what's truth. Uh, another thing would be um, to pray. That, I mean, this place is very easy. It's quiet. I can be by myself and I can pray in here. But I bet you might have a corner in your house that you can find. And the best way to get to know someone is to talk to them, right? And to listen to them. So you talk during prayer, but you also sit quietly in prayer and you listen to him. And I know because I've been a kid, I know that God talks to little kids. And I know that you can hear him. I have no doubt of that. I've already lived it. And I know that you guys can live it too. That when you are not sure about something, that God will show up. You just got to seek him and you got to find him. And then the last thing is talk to your parents, talk to your friends. If you have a question about something, use wise people, smart people around you that can help answer a question. I know I do that. And finally, remember what it says in the Old Testament. So this is Isaiah 55, so get your Bible out again. Isaiah's kind of in the middle. It's Isaiah 55, and it says, As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. That's God talking to us, telling us that his ways are high and big. And you know what? Sometimes there are certain things that we won't have that answer for. We seek and we're not finding the exact answer and it's frustrating. And that's many times when you just start praying for peace that you can accept the fact that you don't understand, which feels pretty hard. So an example for me would be when I was younger that my mom died suddenly and I was not okay with that. I was super, super sad. And I asked God a lot, why, 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 why? And guess what? He did not give me a clear answer. So then I had to turn my prayer around of who is God and do I believe in this God? And I had to read a lot of this Bible to see who he really was. And I had to ask him for peace that I could be okay with not understanding. And guess what? He gave it to me. And he's turned that pain into amazing things for me in life. Because I didn't lose contact with him. I kept asking him. And he stayed faithful to me. And he'll do the same thing for you guys. So remember the last part of the verse we had. It says in Matthew 28, 18. Where it says that all he has, God has all authority in heaven and earth. So you remember that this God that we serve, he is over everything. And it says it a lot in here, and you can believe it, that he, is, he can handle our doubts. He has authority over everything. It doesn't change who he is when we are questioning things. He's still God, and he loves us so much that he'll work it out with us. He just doesn't want you to leave him while you are working it out, that you seek him and you will find him. And I'm so grateful that that's true because I know him and I've gotten to spend a whole life with him. And that's my hope for you guys, Kidwell, is that you'll get to do the same. So good job getting your Bible. Don't forget your three tools. 
You read about him, you pray to him, and you talk to your parents or to your friends to learn more. That doubts are okay, but don't just live with those doubts. Work them out, figure it out. All right, Kirill, I hope you have a great week. It's supposed to be sunny, not super hot. So yay, Jesus. And uh, we miss you. Can't wait to see you again. Mm -hmm.